last time on Utopia Podcast. The party continued to meet with Weaver and members of the Carousel Court, meeting Scylla and Ulu, and beginning to plan on how to take down Guinevere. More information is shared and plans are made. And then a Carousel Court member named Fern arrives letting the party know that the acolytes are being moved from the castle back to the temple, and that Guinevere and Princess Ananoth were there, speaking together, and Guinevere was drawing large circles on the floor. Crunch time is happening now, and the party split with Morgus and Libby doing research in the Carousel Court Library, and Godfrey, Dee Dee, and Scylla doing reconnaissance. That is where we find the party. I mean, Russ is bad. Don't let Seal convince you. She looks over, just sucks her teeth again. <laughs> Speaking of, should we? All right, Ziba now has a silvered longsword for free, right? On <laughs> on loan. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't come back, I paid with my life. Lou, I'll be sure to clear it with Weaver. That's a funny joke, little one. That's a funny joke. Anything <laughs> else I can help you all with? What do you think Libby would like? Do you need anything? I don't know. I just met that guy. Do you know what he uses? I think Libby already placed his orders, if I remembered right. Yeah, I mean, I'm working on a bow, but it'll take me a minute. Like, it's not going to be ready today. All right. Well, thank you, mm. Lulu. I think if going forward here, we might want to either collect ourselves, maybe go into town, and check the boards and the guards to make sure everything is running smoothly. Just play reconnaissance, meet up with them in town. Does that sound agreeable? All right. Are you leaving a, a note or anything? Uh, Godfrey is actually going to go write a letter before he leaves. Hey, hey, when I, when I come back, can you show me how you, you're doing that, that thing with the banging? You mean blacksmithing? Yeah, that... Uh, yeah. For sure. Oh, man. My siblings are going to be so jealous we go home and play war again. S- Wait. What? <laughs> she just looks confused. <laughs> Silla so starts making mass face. <laughs> As if she's trying to work out a problem. <laughs> Would one of you like to go let Morgus and Livy know of our plans? I have something I have to go. I can do it! I can do it! I can do it! Pick me! Pick me! Dee Dee, why don't you go do it? That would be great. (laughs) Yes! And she just, like, runs off down the hole. Ulu, can I take a look at that long sword again? It's not hard to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Here. Here. She hands you a different one. It is a silvered longsword. Has just a pretty standard, like, this is not a fancy blacksmithy. You get the sense in your time it, with her that Ulu could do fancier things, like more high class, like super schmanchy stuff. But she's working for a guild and she has to make do with what she has. So it's very simple leather wrap around the hilt uh, and just a sharp clean silver blade. Um, Scylla's gonna pick it up and, and sort of hold it out at arm's length and feel the grip, feel the weight, kind of 
toss it up in the air a little bit and catch it back down in her hand uh, and say, I'll, uh, I'll get you when I come back. Is that, you're right with that? <sighs> All right. I mean, I really, if you just let me, like. There's nothing helmet, wrong like... with this armor, Ulu. Right. Like parts that, like All one right. part of the armor falls off. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Chips of rust fall to the ground. Uh, <laughs> whatever you say. And she like gives, puts her fist out for your secret handshake. She does it back. <laughs> don't die, all right? Like I, I don't want to like force you to wear a nice suit of armor just because I'm gonna bury you. Don't. If that, <laughs> and she turns around and heads back to the forge. Sila <laughs> so, so Ar- makes Arthur fist to her side. <laughs> <laughs> and a florist uh, came pout and and let Zulu walk away, just as if it happens. As if this ha- yes. conversation happens all the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oop. Uh, great. So, Ziba, um, Morgus and Livy are nose deep in books when you walk into the library. Um, has Ziba ever been into, like, a actual library? She's been in, like, the libraries in the basement of the temple, if you consider that a library. Yeah, I mean, that was a makeshift library. There were... Essentially, just bookshelves lining the exterior walls of the room. She but this is a legitimate had some library books at home. But it was more like they were her siblings' books, and maybe she got hand me downs every once in a while. But they were yeah, I mean, destroyed. This library has no less than like twelve full six foot by whatever foot bookshelves. Um, there's a bay window seating area where Linus is sitting now currently um and there's all kinds of books there's even a book like shelf underneath the bay window so this is like there's a few rows of shelves as well into the interior of the room it's a real live library whoa she's probably gonna run into the room a little too quickly and then all of a sudden like have to stop and take a step back and go whoa Sure. Mm-hmm. Libby, are you being here? Oh, right, Libby. right here, Didi. Oh, over here, Flower. Oh. Are you guys gonna read all of these books? We don't have time, oh. unfortunately. Although, if we get back alive, I would very oh, much goodness. like to. I've, uh, um, I've read a fair number of them since I've been here. Quite nice. Whoa. Not all of them. You must be super smart. I, I do my best. Not as smart as Libby, though. What? <laughs> Very sweet, but the. Uh, um. I just met him. <laughs> um, I have a message. I had a message. I was supposed to give you a message. I thought it was it was an important message. Oh, I think they're gonna go to town <laughs> to do ren ren rec re, rec to reconnoiter. No, re, Rannis. No, not Rannis. I genuinely cannot say the word right now. Reconnaissance. Yes! Um, there you go. Uh, ask if they can observe, if they have time to observe near the um, bottom of the hill. If they have time, it's just a hunch. Are, are we not going with them? Or are we staying here? So it's just going to go bottom of the hill, bottom of the hill, bottom of the hill, and then run uh, out of the room. <laughs> well, <laughs> I figured we could. Um, guys, goodbye, Didi. Anyway, um, I was figuring <laughs> we could uh, look through this uh, um, this book I found at the temple, which appears to be a step-by-step instruction manual on how to summon demons and see if there is any way to reverse our stuff. All? What? Is, is that all? Oh my! Uh, it's just a casual reading. You see the photos of the painter man. <laughs> um, 
it's in a different language, but I cast comprehend language, and I managed to write it all down in my journal. Uh, all right, so all right. it's all. Let's take, a, let's take a look. All right. All right. You all check out that book. Ziba gets back to Godfrey and Scylla. What are you doing with your letter, Godfrey? He is just writing. Uh, he's penning a letter back for home about the adventures he's been on so far and that he's about to go do something dangerous and then folds it up and okay. puts it in an envelope to be sent. Okay. There's a little table in this main sort of dinner conference living space area that is, you know, is for outbound and inbound post. Yep, he will put it there. All right. It's about four o'clock at this point. Um, it's springtime, so there's still a few more hours until dark. Uh, Godfrey, Ziba, aka Didi, and Scylla make their way downtown. Down. Walking fast, faces past, and their home bow. <laughs> <laughs> Zippa is yawning the entire walk over on the edge of a, sh- of a caffeine crash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where are you going? Did Dee Dee, did you tell us? <laughs> oh, yes. She said to make close, close attention to the bottom of the hill. He said. He, he said. Bottom. He said, I, I clearly remember bottom of the hill. All right. Oh, I should have written notes. <laughs> we can try to go to the bottom of the hill. My. You are at the bottom of the hill at the carousel court on the beach. Oh, well, good. What are we looking for here? <laughs> Didi. <laughs> I I think I think he meant I think he meant the bottom of the hill near the castle but uh, Zeba uh, you look up and you see the castle on the top of a giant hill that oh, you're at there the bottom it is. of Oh so clearly there's something here we're supposed to be looking for Is this <laughs> Is this where he thinks the secret passage is Yeah that's probably it I don't know, that wasn't part of the message. Give me an insight. (laughs) (laughs) On just essentially how well you know Libby by now. That's a nine on the dice, so that's a 14 total. Yeah, I would say Libby talked extensively about secret tunnels, and you kind of get that maybe he wants you to check if there's secret tunnels. Uh, on essentially from the docks, okay. so cargo All to right. the castle. Well, let's head towards the docks, and then we'll, I guess, look around for a secret tunnel. A secret tunnel. <laughs> All right. Godfrey will. You head also towards the docks. Look for. <laughs> Or I guess the question would be, does Godfrey see any posters as he's walking through town for, like, work? Or... Are you going through town or are you sticking to the beach? Oh, is there a way? Yeah. What's faster? That one. Which? What's faster? The beach. We will stick to the beach then. Scenic okay. route and the fastest route. Uh, as you stick to the beach, um, you do see one of Dee Dee's mi- or Ziba's missing persons flyers attached to one of the under parts of a pier as you're walking through um, before you make it to the docks. And I... When I see it, do I make that connection like immediately, or is the uh, picture just a little bit off enough where? (laughs) She's only aged a month, month and a half, so she looks exactly the same. And it clearly says Zippa. Godfrey will grab the poster (laughs) and then look over towards Zippa, 
and kind of turn it so she could see it. And Zippa will look at you and go, I don't know any Zippa. You don't know any Zippa, do you? I only know Dee Dee. <laughs> so, Dee Dee. It's just a preference. <laughs> then you won't mind if I start calling you Zibba out in the open. Not I, I don't know a Zibba. Who's that? I'm Dee Dee. So look, <laughs> Dee Dee. This is a wrench in yes. the plan and something that we needed to know about before we came out here. Okay? This... This could run interference on everything we're trying to do today. So now we have to look at it as one of two options. We either have to try to lean into this and use it to our advantage in some way that's beyond my comprehension, or we have to turn around right now and try to find a suitable disguise for you. I'm behaving! Why do we have to turn around? Because if you get found, and your poster's here on the pier and people recognize you, it's going to bring untoward attention to what we're trying to do. We're trying to be covert. What if we just cut my hair? That could be part, that that could be be part of making a design. A design. A design. Where did my words go? A disguise. That's the D word I was looking for. Design uh, your <laughs> very soul to be different. <laughs> so cutting your hair could be part of a suitable disguise. But we would have to do a little bit more. I feel like asking about this at this juncture is just going to make my day that much longer. But why is your face on that poster? Um. Godfrey hands the poster over <laughs> to Sila. I don't know, I'll take the poster off him. Because I didn't want to be a farmer. She's she's dead serious. Sila <laughs> <laughs> starts making math face again, trying to connect the dots faster than but it's not clicking. What's even good about being okay. a farmer anyway? Don't, you're not boring. I don't want to be a farmer. <laughs> She's like kicking his hand now. Am I missing a, a an order of farmers? You were, I mean, if that's not what you wanted, don't pursue it. But are you wanted for not being a farmer? I think it's. I'm not wanted. A... It's it, it's us missing completely different. You're a runaway. She's gonna. She's gonna get low. <laughs> you don't have to get that low. Uh, Ziba as a half orc is not much shorter than you, even in her young age. Godfrey noticing the shift <laughs> turns his she, back towards gonna, the pier. She's gonna whisper, shout, and and sort of realize what she's done, uh, and and crumple the flyer up and stuff it in her pocket. I can go where I want to go. It's not my wave. It's my choice. Wait. <laughs> Don't look into that. <laughs> All right. Anybody. As this crew is getting caught up in a Zimba missing poster, Morgus and Livy begin to evaluate this book that Livy found beneath the temple. And what is your intention with investigating it? Just deciphering it? Well, I already... Deciphering is wrong. But I I did, like, write... Basically, I'm trying to find a way to reverse this. To, like, break um, whatever hold these demons have on our reality and to send them back. Like, if there's a way to stop all of this. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say you show this book um, in this strange language to Morgus. 
And you watch as Morgus looks at these glyphs and evaluates them. It kind of... Like, there's a glaze that goes over his eyes for a second. And Morgus, you you don't know how, but you're able to read this. Even though in your mind you recognize that these are glyphs you don't think you've ever seen before. You're able to read the book as if it were common. Spooky. As if it's a language you know. Um... Um, and Morgus will kind of, he'll, he'll place a couple fingers on his head for a second. Um, I, uh, and he'll, he'll, he'll do another thousand mile stare for a couple seconds. And then, uh, the owl will kind of nip him just like at his sideburn and like tug a little bit and he'll kind of come out of it. Are you well, okay? I, 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 I'm, I, I'm all right. Thank you. Um, this, your translation's accurate. Um, very well done on that. Do so, you need me to uh, get you anything? I, I'll, I'll be all right. Thank you. Um, all right, so 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 you're you're looking for ways to um, to reverse the polarity of the arcane um, mechanism here. Uh, he's he, Morgus seems very um, thrown off. Morgus, um, it's 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 like when someone is thinking about something else and fixated on it, but trying not to think about it. Um, I, and, um, you're, are you, are, are you trying to reverse this? Are you just trying to break this? What's, um, what's, what's your goal here, Levi? From an arcane perspective on this. Levi pauses and looks at him and then starts, um, well, um, and he kind of slams the book down a little bit, not loud enough to seem aggressive, but almost as a way to like s- try to snap you out a little bit um well basically what I was thinking was if this is anything like any of the rituals I cast um there has to be a way to either break it or to make it stop from happening or mm-hmm. a way to reverse it I think the breaking will be easier um we just had to cancel out whatever they're doing but if there is a way for us to um, send them all back from where they came from in a nice neat way that would be much appreciated yes very much I mean if if there's a way to simply reverse uh, the directionality or or, or the intent or inverse sort of of take um, the arcane aspect of uh, of this of this construct, um, are you familiar with uh, the, the nature of the arcane and, and sort of the the weave of reality, uh, where the, uh, reality and the arcane intersect? Are you aware of that concept? I'm more of a generalist in that area. I've read uh, a little no. bit about um, demons and the undead and it's... devils, but. Uh... That's all. That's all right. That's all right. Um, and he, he seems I a little bit distracted, but he's 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 like he's trying to, um, he's he's going to go off on this litany of very. It's it's like listening to Livy a gets scientist his notes. <laughs> who like it, like they're clearly very knowledgeable, but they practice a very different kind of science than you do, right? And mm-hmm. and he starts talking about um, it, well. I, you see, if there's um, if there's a function based on uh, the runes involved and the construction of the uh, based on uh, the materials and uh, sort of, um, and then he trails off a little bit. There, there, there should be a way, possibly, to um, 
and he gets distracted again. I think we can make something work. Fantastic. And he, he, he has kind of a worried look on his face, and then he, um, his little owl will tug on his beard again. Um, uh, this is hopeful. This is good. We found something. Uh, that, that, or we could look more to find, to find something. Um, uh, and, and I, and I think he's going to start paging through and looking at, are, are there like diagrams in this book? He's, mm-hmm. he's going to focus on Yeah, there are full illustrated photos. Um, that's, yeah. That's, that's what, um, I'm, that's what he's moving to. He's, he's moving toward the, like, if there's a formula or a diagram or like a stepwise thing, that's, he's focusing on the more technical aspects of it now. Yeah. Um, you learn fairly quickly from reviewing this that there are only a few components needed to create a summoning circle. Um, you need to draw the correct markings on the ground based on the plane in which you're summoning from. You need an, an object or article that is connected to the being that you want to summon in some way. And you need, like, a large enough space for that some being to be a part of and just inherently be a strong enough, enough level of... You, you essentially need to be knowledgeable enough with magic and have strong enough magics to appropriate appropriately do an incantation. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, she was throwing circles on the floor. She was throwing circles on the floor in the in in the the the, the big room. E. That's not good. And if I'm she trying to call more things here, if I'm understanding this correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the larger the circle, the more demons they can be summoned. Correct? I well, I either possibly. I I mean the. You could either summon more at once or just summon something much bigger. But if if you're working on something bigger like that, you need you need the space and you need the strength to do it. And if she's working with that size of space, we have we we have to move. We have to act. We have to go. Our our, our, uh, our, our compatriots need to know this. Where is she so, getting the energy from? I, it, it could either be um, perhaps from uh, c- c- collecting powerful um, sources of power and, and manipulating that. It could be simply innate. I mean, if she's a demon, she, she could be... Who Do you knows? think she's sacrificing? She could be. I'm sorry, what? Well, some power is activated by sacrificing people, Correct. Could she be doing? I, I I would imagine the right kind of magic would um, find that to be an appropriate uh, 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 avenue of channeling. Yes. Do you have evidence to believe that she's sacrificing people? No, it was things? a it was more of could she be doing that? Listen, if you are new to podcasting and you're looking to get into it, Anchor is the way to go. Anchor is a free podcasting platform. It allows you to edit, record, upload, add music completely all in one tool. Not only that, but it distributes your podcast across all platforms and has no minimum listenership to allow you to start gaining ad revenue. If you are new to podcasts and are looking to get your podcast out there, I definitely recommend Anchor. You can download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I'm not finding anything in front of me that 
requires a sacrifice for this specifically. If she if she is sacrificing something, it could be as simple as uh, well. All right. I don't know. Let's take not just from the that. books, but also from Kipa's personal experience. She said um, they were praying for long periods of time. So to summon a single demon. And there were several initiates. But she's sending back all the initiates. So how is she managing on her own to get a large number of these things? Or were those just, ah, oh, there's too much speculation, too much hypothesis? It, there's too much we don't know. And we won't be able to figure this out with what's in front of us. You're right. I think we might need to think on our feet on this one. Um, and al- although, if we can find a little bit more about what's being drawn, those circles, if we can find out how to stop that, that might be the best ground to stand on right. here. That we can research. I wish... Yes, we can research. I also wish we had a, a way... A good way to break into the castle or to see the guards. Ah, I wish we had more time, but we never have enough time. All right. If we're short on time, perhaps we have other resources. I mean, I'm smart, but I'm not that good talking to people. Well, you seem a much more uh, articulate sort than I am. I'm way more cute with talking to people. Um, it is a certain skill I have. Uh, I just don't know if I could go and talk to the... Alright. We'll, we'll see. Um, when we get there, perhaps I could find us... But I think we need to regroup for now. We have... Um, when everyone comes back, we present as much knowledge as we've managed to acquire. Acquire, but for now we um we finish our research and wait for the return. That's very true, and you know what makes research better? Coffee or tea? Usually a croissant, maybe some blueberries or fruit. Would you like something? I'm gonna go downstairs and get something. He he kind of lights back up and seems a little more even keeled at this. Livy is about to open his mouth, but pauses when he sees how happy you look, and then he'll just smile and nod. Um, yes, uh, the. The blue thing, the uh, the presentation. I would very much like a, a version of that coffee. That was oh, very nice. All right, that that I can do. Come, Bitsy, and he sort of hobbles off with his little owl in tow. Awesome, uh, party down at the docks. You are cornering Ziba in a way, Scylla and Godfrey, having discovered this missing person poster speaking to her about running away from home while looking for a way to the castle any sort of tunnels or or travel points from this point of the city hey I'm sorry Uh, that was that was kind of loud um The whole runaway thing. Are you good? Are you being chased? I'm fine, but why would you call me a criminal? I mean... I mean, you see a wanted poster and and you sort of assume, which... Heroes... Criminals can't become heroes, so there's no way I would be a criminal. You make a really good point. How about for now, you just... Put this on, and Godfrey will take on, off his hat and put it on Ziba's head and kind of tilt it downward so it obscures part of her face. And then Godfrey wants to take a second look at the poster to see all of the details on it. Oh, Ziba's looking for this. Yeah. Protesis. Hey, wh- what are you doing? Don't mess with the hair. You're giving me lice like my cousin did. <laughs> You'll live, I'm sure. Um, great. You look at the poster, there is a sketch of Ziva, and it looks very similar to her. I would say the biggest difference, the tusks are a little bit smaller in the photo than what they are on Ziva as you see her currently, as they're kind of growing in on this young half-work. Um, 
Specifically, it says, a young half-orc from Orchard Grove synth grab has gone missing. Her family would love for anyone with information that will help bring her home to report to the local authorities at once. I know exactly where I am. You know, for what it's worth, it's not a very good likeness of you. I know! Look at that baby! It looks nothing like me. I'm an adult now. Also, if the hat gives you lice, I'm just saying I think I've got something back at Weaver's. If it happens, but I think for now we should maybe just take the precaution. I'm just saying, someone who wears a mask like that all the time can't have the best hygiene. (laughs) Rude, first off. Second off. I've never seen you wash your face. (laughs) We've known each other for less than 24 hours, and we haven't been in the same room the whole time. you're supposed to be washing your face once a day. Look, this isn't important right now. Sila, does this look like a passable disguise? Uh... It does. And now that I think of it, though, Ziba, I've never seen you wash your face. Anyways, guys, we're supposed to be on a red, 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 reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. I was getting there. Reconnaissance. You were. Thank you. We are, and that's why we're doing the disguise, so we don't have to go all the way back, get you a new disguise, and then come all the way back here. All right? Are we good? So for now, and she'll flick the rim of the hat, we'll do this, and we'll carry on. Yeah? Sound good? Yeah. All right. Did any of you see any entrances? We should probably do a good scope of the port here. So Livy seemed pretty sure that if there was a tunnel up to the castle, that it would start here. Something about the bottom of the hill. Is this a hill? Yes. I mean, this is... Yeah. I'm not sure if I know the difference between a hill and a rolling plain, but I'm sure I've never seen a mountain. Yes, you have. There are mountains all. You had to pass through the mountains to get here. She doesn't know, man. She doesn't know, man. I mean, to be fair, it just seemed like a big hill. It just seemed like a big hill. When you <laughs> literal, baby when you walked here, were you looking up the whole time or down? But like, aren't mountains supposed to be pointy? Because like, I didn't really walk on any pointy land. It was it was all just pretty sloping. When oh the deception God. check is so bad, the DM calls it out. <laughs> Um, all right. right. Everyone give me a perception or investigation. Whichever you choose. Oh! Uh, These are gonna go super well. 16? Five. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, with a 15, Zeva, you look around, you see lots of people, lots of carts moving different directions. Lots of warehouses. You don't see anything that looks like a door in the ground, like a tunnel. Like what Ziva would know to be a tunnel. Just some warehouses and houses? I thought- no, there's not really any homes here in, in the docks at the port, but there are warehouses and carts and sailors and ships and jetties and all kinds of people milling about and um, goods being taken from one place to the other and as you take a few minutes to like look around to see where the carts are going they're just either going onto ships or through the streets or you know stopping at a warehouse to be unloaded but this is just on the dock right they said or Livy, he told me that it would be at, like, the base of the hill of the castle, I thought. Or am I getting that instruction? Yeah, no, you, you're right. But the, the two places where the base of the hill would be would be right outside of the carousel court and here on the docks. We didn't find it next to the entrance to the court, and so now we're looking for it here. I should really pay attention when Livy's talking. He's very smart. I just don't know what he's saying half the time. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 
great. What would you like to do? Ooh. Um. So you said we were watching people come to and from, right? Does there seem to be a significant like shipment coming in right now? Um. There seems to be a lot of trade happening. I can't tell. It might look like a lot to you, Zeba, someone who's unfamiliar with the docks. My thought is, they've been outside of their... Because the people are coming back to the church today, right? The disciples. And they've been gone for a while. And when we were there, all their food was kind of moldy and gross. And I didn't even want to eat it. So, like, if they're all coming back today, someone's got to be delivering a lot of food to restock all the kitchens because everything went bad. So, maybe you could find a way in that way. I'm always one to follow the food. Went bad where? What do you... moldy food? Who's... Oh, in the basement. Of the place. Where we met Godfrey. I mean, I did threaten him, but we're, we're okay now. It was under the church. Um, and I think we could follow the food into the church, but we're trying to get into the castle. Oh, yeah, that's a different place. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea, though. They gotta have food, too, right? They eat there? Everyone's gotta eat. Some of this food's coming, so I'm hungry, I guess. I think I just need supper. <laughs> Are there any, like, uh, like, harbor stalls any like dockside snack boats uh there's not anything here in the docks themselves but Scylla you and Godfrey would know about the cart district which is a group uh like a cluster of carts that sell food and wares and goods Well, hey, listen, I reckon if we carry on down, at least to the end of this, and we could head towards the car district and pick up some food? Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about my story. I'll be fine, I'll be fine, I'll be, we'll be there for supper. It's fine. Um, I'm so not really- So stomach audibly growls. <laughs> <laughs> like an anime growl. <laughs> really the plan person. I don't know what to do besides go get food right now. Yeah, no, listen, I'm just saying, we put one foot in front of the other down the harbor, we see where we get, and there might be food at the end of this, but we could also find the entrance. Which could be more exciting than food, maybe. Okay, I'm down. You got me sold. Alright. Um, you all spend the next hour scouring the docks for an entrance um, underneath the piers, all along the shore, all through the city and yeah let's let's see what happens don't find anything I'm now going to start skipping rocks. <laughs> uh, it's hard to skip rocks on the ocean. There are waves. Yeah. Um, she doesn't know that. Just, <laughs> just throwing rocks as soon as it hits the water just falls into the The frustration the of not being able to skip the rocks and the frustration of not finding this entrance is growing. So she's just going to start with stupid place. Look at the rock. Just skip. I used to be so good at this. And I don't understand why nothing's working right now. And she's just like mumbling under her breath. <laughs> I didn't find anything. Uh, is there anyone hanging out on the docks that I might know from moonlighting working like the door, working security? I mean, yeah, you know George. Um, he is a large Leonin man in like a red oh, brain fog. 
<laughs> I didn't even mean red, I meant blue, but I said red. Uh, a blue <laughs> vest with golden buttons and like a gray sleeved collared shirt. And he has on tan pants, his paws just bare on the ground. On his big mane shimmering, shining in like the standard tan and golden brown colors. George is the dock master, um, and he's there morning till dusk, um, directing people and hanging out. And Sola, you would definitely know him from just passing ships, you know? Uh, I'm gonna try and catch his eye and, and just kind of like do that, that not quite like finger guns, but like on like the hat tip kind of mm-hmm. greeting. Yeah, he just nods back. Uh, go over and approach him and just say, what's going on? How you been? I've been great, Scylla! How are you? Uh, you know, hanging in. Hanging in. Mm-hmm. Yep, know how that goes. Uh, hey, uh, you... You know your way around the docks? Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, it's, it's my job. Yeah, yeah, no, you're super good at it. Um, did anyone weird kind of, you know, creeping in out of any entrances that, uh, you know, one wouldn't really want to venture through or, you know, odd figures hanging about? Uh, uh, I mean, the rat problem's gotten worse here on the pier. But, uh, I literally just took care of those. How? They're back. God damn it. My house is overrun, so. Oh my god. <laughs> it's overrun. I'll, all right. Uh, when when are you in? I'll um. I'll handle it. When? Yeah, I mean, I posted a bounty, but no one has come by. So, if you want to do it, I'll pay you the gold I posted for. Yeah, uh, yeah, let me... Just come find me when you're free. Yeah, no, absolutely. We will, uh, we'll take care of it, George. Cool. Uh, yeah, other than that, um, nope. No, nothing weird. All right, well, I appreciate it. Um, hey, listen, you, you have a, a great day, um... And we'll uh we'll catch you later. We'll um we'll see you around about the rats. You work in the door tonight? I'm gonna have to pick it up, I think. Alright. Well, be safe. Do my best. Cheers. Cheers. Well, did he know any cool places to check out? Secret doors. He's great. Um cool's not really a word I would he's very helpful he's very helpful um but listen if we have some free time later uh there might be some coin in it to to take care of this thing for him so, I mean it should be quick I it's a, it's rats kind of th- rats, rats just rats well what they ever do I mean we, they're in, they're in a space they're in a space they gotta be in someone else's space oh we can go put him in his sibling's house. I do that to my siblings. Just put him in their bed. I really know about his extended family. I should ask him about that, but we're never gonna do it. Yep. Mm. Maybe they'd like the rats. Or at least he'd find it funny. Think he paid us extra for that? They may be better with rats than he is. I don't know. We just gotta get rid of him. We gotta get him out yeah, of his house. So... Maybe the rats know where the secret entrance is. Let's follow the rats! <laughs> so she's oh. gonna start enthusiastically looking <laughs> for rats. Yep. Yeah. You know, I think maybe, you know, just maybe, the, the rat job is great. But we've got to finish staking out the castle. You know, one one job at a time. What if the rats know something? Um, as you say that, Godfrey, you look out over the pier, past the ships into the horizon, and the sky is changing to the bright pinks and bright oranges of a springtime sunset. 
I'm afraid if they know something, it's too late for us to question them. We should get moving. I'm sure Livy and Morgus will remember that we were going to meet together near the castle tonight and won't be waiting for us at the carousel court. I'm certain we will see them there, so we should head to the castle. Yeah, I think we should absolutely head to the castle and meet them. Yeah. yeah. I'm fairly certain that was our plan. Philip's going to take her rock and try and throw it as far as she possibly can. Oh. That's a good throw. It's impressively far. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we're going to go back to Morgus and Libby. Is there any way us dumbasses could possibly remember we're supposed to meet them somewhere? Uh, yeah, as Morgus brings in your coffee and croissants and blueberries and does his magic uh, to make your coffee have the blue sheen and flavor that you liked before, um, roll me a history check. <laughs> we're gonna see. This is natural fucking 20. <laughs> oh. 12. Oh, no. oh, my. We should probably package this up. I'm just sort of... Oh. Did we... Did we take too, too much time on cutting the mangoes? <laughs> oh, no. Um, and, like, there's also this little compote of, like, mango and blueberry that's got a little bit of cinnamon on top that he made while he was down there. Marcus, like, what is the uh, matter? We're supposed to meet the others at the castle tonight. Oh, no, this is, this is my nightmare about college all over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this is... Did you, while I was downstairs, did you manage to find anything more about sort of stopping the circles in any way? Did Livy? I was down there for a while, I'm sorry. Mm-mm. No? Nope. D uh, no, by um, no, I'm. S I am. Um, we couldn't. Dis I couldn't discover anything more. Oh well, shit! All right. Well, um, I'll just sort of package. Mm. The Would you like your drink to go? We've actually got these unique little, like, little pop-on things. It's it's sort of, sort of a canvas, and it's got a little, like, Marcus, we it. don't have time. Of course I do. Let's go. All right. Oh, <laughs> fine. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Let's of course go. I do. Let's go. <laughs> okay. All right. And he'll, like, like as we walk out down by the kitchen, he'll, like, pop in and, like, grab one of those little things, and it'll, like, like sort of halfway elastic, like, tie onto your cup. And you're like, mm, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's essentially just a wooden cup with, like, cheesecloth over it and a little hole to drink out of. <laughs> Cannon, you're welcome. That's gonna be our first merch. Oh no. No, no. First merch. First merch. I don't want to drink out of that. Um. <laughs> Alright. So, Morgus and Livy make their way back through the winding trails of maze that lead to the carousel court. Coming out in the middle of the guards living section of the town. So the whole section just outside the gate on the north side of town that is home to the city guard, the barracks. A lot of them choose to live there and have their families there as well. Um, and as you're heading there, um, you walk through the walls uh, into the city and it's you see people eating dinner happy families through the windows the candlelight glowing as the sun sets and dinner begins um, and as you come to the main street um, you, you pass by these large gardens uh, and Livy you would know that these are the Honorina Gardens um, they're a prize within the city, and they are known for their beauty and majesty, and that there's a way to get to the castle through the gardens for the public to kind of go and, and look and observe it from a distance there. 
I do love Florencia at this time of night. You know, there's a lovely cafe with outdoor seating not two streets down. Have you been there before? I think we should look... They've got sort of an excellent sort of post on everything. It's very nice. I think we should look at the gardens for a second. That way. Oh. Castle. Good thinking. So, sorry. I tend not to hear people when I'm thinking. Forgive me. Well, it's all right. But, um, I, I don't know how familiar you were with the gardens, but, um, there is a, I believe there is a way to get to the castle through it. Well, let's go find out. I've been here maybe once or twice, but maybe not all the way up to the castle. And if we need a better vantage, Bitsy could take a look for us. All right. I think, yeah. So Levy's going to, like, it. Very casually stroll about the gardens, trying not to look suspicious, to see if there, like, well, could be a nice way to sneak in. Thank you so much for listening to episode 17 of the Utopia podcast. It's been really great. Um, we are on all the socials. Please follow us there. We're even on fandom. What? Uh, <laughs> go help us build those communities. And if you like what you hear and you want to be a part, feel free to subscribe to our Patreon. You get access to our Discord, behind the scenes content, monthly Q&As. If you subscribe for the bodacious bards level, you even get bloopers and pictures of my notes. Uh, and yeah, I, we just thank you so much. Uh, intro and outro music as well as the transitions this episode by nolan clock and engineered produced everything else by me and the cast i hope you have a really really great day